resident in this place today. You can tell it is the Spirit of the Lord. God bless you, Reverend Dicey. God bless you, Chairman of our Board of Deacons, Deacon Ron. To all officers, members, visitors, sound technicians, everybody, nurses, ushers, Brother Brian, Brother Joe, Brother Simeon. My, our wonderful mass choir, God bless your hearts. Today I want to begin a series of sermons entitled, Short Sermons from the Past. Yeah. I'm going to endeavor to take a small text and preach that within the framework of 20, 25 minutes. Now, if I go over, it's because I got happy. But I at least titled it short sermons from the past. Gospel of Mark chapter 5. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> when you have that... <clears throat> Stand on your feet and uh, locate verse 19. <clears throat> Say amen when you have it. Amen. The Gospel of Mark, <laughs> yeah, chapter 5, verse 19. Hear and read the word of the Lord to us today. But Jesus refused, and the Rabbi Standard Version has it rendered this way, and said to him, go home. You may be seated. Jesus, Jesus refused and said to him, Go home. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. Go, home. go home. Go home. Those of us who grew up <clears throat> from Lamar through the decade of the 90s, remember a popular television show called Family Matters. This show featured a well-known family called the Winslows, a decent urban family. They, this family had a pesky and annoying neighbor by the name of Stephen Q. Urkel. This character was known to barge into the Winslow residence at the most inopportune time. And after a couple exchanges of words back and forth, either Laura or one of the Winslow family members would say, go home, Steve. Steve would keep on rambling and they would say, go home, Steve. Steve would keep on rambling. And they would say, go home, Steve. And then they got frustrated and said, go home, Steve. Go home, go home, go home. Yeah. And after that repetition, Steve would finally utter, I don't have to take this. I'm going home. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I felt that this statement was pregnant with preaching possibilities. Because we come to the church during this time, this kind of holiday season, with the expectation that we're going to get out of church early. Some come with their mind, some folk come to church, but their mind is on the next gathering that they're going to attend after this service. I'm going to a cookout. I'm going to just be by myself. Most of us only associate going home with chilling and relaxing. But brothers and sisters, can I remind each of us just before you go home, can I just remind us that all of us have had some issues in our lives? All 
all of us had some uncontrollable realities in our life. All of us have found ourselves in trouble that we could not control on our own. Let me see if I can talk to this side because this side ain't saying nothing. But is there anybody on this side that can testify that you've had some things, some addictions you could not control? You had some issues you were in relationship you could not control? That ain't this side. Let me talk to this side. Anybody on this side can say you had some debt you couldn't control? You had some financial trouble you couldn't control? All right, let me try everybody. Now, is there anybody that's been in anything that you could not control? You you had a drug addiction, had an alcohol addiction, had an addiction, had a, uh, all these type of addictions. But is there anybody here that can testify that God showed up in the midst of your chaotic situation? Come on, help me preach now, brothers and sisters. In fact, that's the reason why I'm sitting up in the church today. Because if it had not been, I wish I had a church in here for the Lord on my side. Listen, the places are the place I am right now, the attitude I have right now, it wasn't the attitude I had 12 years ago. Because if 12 years ago had you said the wrong thing to me, I cuss you from A to Z, one, two, three. Can I get some help in here? But look at what God can. Yeah. Sister Kathy, God can take God can take a wild person and calm them down. God can show up and sh am I in the right church in here? Anybody here can testify that God can take your uncontrollable mess and give you a mess. Am I in the right church? Sadly, Deacon Lynn, sadly, we, our testimony, get stuck in the security of the sanctuary. Many of us get so tied up because we, we are afraid of our story. We are afraid to share our story. But I think the text here, what would happen if each of us who would leave the church today and go tell our story to somebody else? What would happen if you went to your friends, your enemies, your family, your boo-boo, your ex, whoever you... Come on, somebody. What would happen if you went to somebody and told them about a Jesus that could change lives? What would happen if somebody, if you went and told somebody that Jesus is able to save, that Jesus is able to sanctify, that Jesus is able to satisfy? Give me, give me about eight Baptist minutes and I'm going to get out of here. Eight Baptist minutes, eight Baptist minutes, eight Baptist minutes. At this minute, Sons of Ray, this story deals with a man who eventually goes to share his story. Jesus and his disciples have come on the other side, they've come into Gentile territory. They, the disciples have just witnessed a miracle whereby Jesus spoke peace to the raging waters. He said to them, peace, be still. Now, he comes on the other side. Someone shout, other side. He comes on the other side and there meets him a man and the Bible describes this man as having an unclean spirit. Now, as a manifestation of his uncleanliness, he lives, his residency is in the graveyard. He is a living person living in a dead situation. He's a living person living, or he is a living person residing in a dead situation. This unclean spirit has distorted his whole, the image of God in this man. This man has, because of this unclean spirit, he has superhuman strength. Now, Mark describes this man in a couple ways. First of all, he lives in the graveyard, verse 2. He is uncontrollable, verse 3b to verse 4. He breaks shackles asunder, verse 4. Uh, verse four. He spends his time in the graveyard, day and night crying, verse 5a, and he cuts himself, verse 5b. Listen, brothers and sisters, there is a spiritual force that possesses this man. Now, I must confess, brothers and sisters, that demonic activity exists today in our culture. 
Can I get a witness in here? That, let me say that again, demonic activity exists in our culture and in our world today. For when you have racism, there is demonic activity. When you have classism, demonic activity, sexism, demonic activity, homophobia, demonic activity, greed, demonic activity, abuse of other people, demonic activity, injustice, demonic activity. When you can commit heinous crimes such as the one that was committed at that airport this week in Istanbul, that is demonic activity. Now, let me also say this, that what most of us classify as demonic activity where somebody's rolling around on the floor with their head, ear, hands, or eyes rolling around and all this other stuff, sometimes I believe that that's a cry for attention. Some folk ain't possessed, they just need attention. But, but what is the idea of one being possessed? by a demon. It means that they have, they are possessed by something they cannot control. Now some of us are not possessed by demons but we have situations whereby we cannot control. Can I get a witness in here? For when you have drug, whenever there's drug addiction, that's something you can't control. When there's drunkenness, you can't control yourself. When there, when people have certain mental illnesses, they cannot control themselves. When a person has a break, bad breakup, they are out of emotional control. When a person loses their place of employment, they are out of financial control. All of us will find ourselves in a place where we cannot control ourselves it is evident brothers and sisters <clears throat> that this man comes to Jesus against the wishes of the demons because he comes according to the text he comes running kneeling and crying with a loud voice verses 6 and 7a in verse 7 he makes an appeal for Jesus not to torment him then uh, and the reason why he's doing that is because Jesus has already been saying come out of this man you unclean spirit Jesus then questions the man and says well now what's your name and what we discover is this man don't just have one demon but he got a whole legion of demons in him can the church say amen? amen and then the Bible makes it clear that the man says listen don't send these demons into town but cast them into, there's a herd of pigs, there's some swine. Send them into the swine and Jesus gives them leave of absence. The demons jump into the swine. The pigs run violently down a steep hill and they drown in the sea. Now those who were making money off the pigs got, got upset and said, listen, I hope for gain is lost and they went in the town and told everybody listen there's somebody here that's casting out demons they came and met Jesus and said Jesus get out of town get out go home and as Jesus Sunsaray is getting on the boat the man says Jesus let me go with you the, the people have seen this man sitting and clothed in his right mind. And he says, listen, if Jesus can heal me, I better stay with him. He says, Jesus, let me stay with you. And Jesus says, no, go back to your friends. Go home and tell your friends what good things the Lord has done for you. And the text says that he went home and told everybody in so much so that people were wondering what in the name of God. Why was it more important to Jesus for this man to go and share his story? Why is it so much the more important that you and I get out of the comfort of the church and go share our story with somebody else? On this holiday weekend, 
Why is it important that you not just go and eat yourself some turkey or 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 ribs or you know yeah hot dogs and hamburgers and you know the spot the potato salad macaroni salad seafood salad and all the trimmings that you go have some good corn and some pork and beans with some good barbecue sauce in it. Why? Why is it important that you and I? Don't just go home and talk about what the got it, the latest gossip. But why is it important that you and I share our story? Y'all want the answer? Let's get the answer and get out of here. I got three more Baptist minutes. Our story contributes to God's mission for reaching people. Our story contributes to God's plan to reach people. As you examine the scriptures, brothers and sisters, it has been always God's intent that people come to faith. You read that when you read the children of Israel in the Old Testament, God wanted to make them a witness so that the Gentiles would come to believe. When you come to the New Testament, Jesus says, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Y'all got, am I got any Bible readers in here? I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Come on now, get with me now. I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Thank you. But now, not only so, but then Jesus commands his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom. And so here it is. Jesus tells this man to go back home. This command is different from the command that we heard about Lorenzo. Y'all remember Lorenzo the leper? Lorenzo the leper, brothers and sisters, God told him, don't tell nobody, but go offer a sacrifice that Moses commanded to be offered. But in this instance, Jesus is saying, go tell everybody. In chapter 1, here's the difference. In chapter 1, Jesus' fame had already been established. Everybody knew about him. But in in chapter 5, Jesus has just got put out of town before he could even begin his ministry. But there was a need for somebody to be there that even though Jesus was going, somebody needed to be there to share the gospel to somebody. And can I tell somebody, you got some folk in your family, you got some folk on your job that need to hear your story. There is a great need because God wants to reach people and we've got to stop being ashamed of our story. Stop being ashamed of where God brought you from. Listen, if you used to be loose, tell your story. Can I get a witness in here? You want to know why people don't want to come to church? Because they feel that people in church are nothing but phonies. Y'all the same man in here. People feel that people in church are not real or transparent. But brothers and sisters, I went to God that all of us in here could stay, could stand up on our feet and tell somebody, look what the Lord has done. He took me out the crack house, took me out the dope house, took me out the party house. He took me out somebody's house. You just don't know where I come from. Can I get a witness in here? Don't get it twisted. I know I look good. I know I'm saved. I know I'm sanctified. But just catch me on the wrong day. Can I get a witness in here? I told you I'm almost out of here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But, but look at what God can do. And if God can change me, then show up. One more thing and I'm out of here. We on our way out. I got two more Baptist minutes. But our story can be an instrument that brings addition to God's kingdom. Can I say that again? Our story, Nafis, can be an instrument that leads people or adds 
to the kingdom. The people told Jesus, get out of town. You done ruined our chances of making money. Get out of town. You would think they would be happy about the man being healed. But they're so concerned about their financial gain that they forget about people. I can't stay right there, but I think I ought to remind somebody, don't you expect people to always be happy about what the Lord is doing for you. Because if they're not profiting, they don't, they can really care less. Can I get a witness? That's why. Don't you invest your time on people that don't want to hear it. Don't you get mad when people reject you. Because if they rejected Jesus, they're going to reject you. But Jesus, the man comes. Brother Joe, man comes and says, yeah, says, in, 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 uh, in contrast to the people who said, go home. The man said, Jesus, let me go with you. I want to follow you. That was admirable and applauding. But Jesus says, no. He, he says, go home. He refuses but he does not reject him from being a follower. Don't miss that. Jesus refuses, but does not reject him from being a follower. Jesus said, listen, man, you, I don't need you. I got enough people with me. But there's some people in Decapolis that need to hear your story. So what I want you to do is go back home. Look at your neighbor and say, go home. The man goes home and people are looking at him. He didn't say nothing first at the beginning, but he just walked. And the way he walked was different. They noticed this ain't the this is this the same one who used to be possessed? Is this the same one who was living in the graveyard? And then he opened up his mouth and his voice was clear. He spoke with clarity. And they looked and he began to testify. I know what you're thinking. You know where I came from. But but when I look back over my life and I look at what God has done for me. Listen, he did for me what I could not do for myself. The people are spellbounded. And they, and the text here, brothers and sisters, is really calling for us. Leave the comfort of the church. We about to get out of here. Some of you, but some of you right here got stories that you sitting on. And you waiting till the end of the year to tell your story. You waiting to get behind the mic to tell your story. But can I get some witnesses in here? You don't need a mic to tell your story. Can I get a witness in here? I don't need nobody to put me behind no mic. All I need is to be around somebody who wants to hear about what the Lord has done for me. Somebody has a testimony that God can help you overcome your uncontrollable situations. God can help you overcome drug addiction. God can help you overcome racial prejudice. God can help you overcome mental disorder. God can help you overcome your relationship breakdown. God can help you overcome church hurt. God can help you overcome your family separation. God can help you overcome your marital divorce. God can help you overcome learning disability. God can help you overcome poverty. God can help you overcome homelessness. God can help you overcome health failure, unemployment, and hatred. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to go home now. But I want to tell you, that Jesus is calling for us yeah. to go home. Yeah. That's what the text is really concerning. Jesus is saying to us now that, uh, that God has a concern about everybody's salvation. Yeah. 
Not only does God have concern about everybody's salvation, but God wants to use you to share your story. He wants you to tell your story about what the Lord can do in your life. Now I need you to get up on your feet for me and go to your neighbor and say, neighbor, go home. Go home and tell someone I was sinking deep in sin. Shoulder! 
love somebody that Jesus completely saves. Am I in the right church here? Jesus saves. Go home. Tell somebody that Jesus saves from the utmost to the guttermost, from the White House to the doghouse. Jesus. Jesus, go home. Share your soul. Go home. We about to get out of here. But just look at somebody. Tell them go home. Go home. Go home. Go home. God bless you. I'm finished. Clap your hands and tell the Lord. There might be someone here who <coughs> does not know Jesus, has not trusted him for yourself as we rest upon our feet, everyone. Jesus calls for each of us to come home. First of all, before you can go home, you got to come home. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah, yeah. You got to know Jesus for yourself. Yeah. Am I right, church here? Yeah. You got to become a follower of him. And following Jesus don't mean everything going to be good. But I do tell you this. Having Jesus does mean that in the midst of the bad, you have someone who is walking with you on every hand. Am I not church here? So if you're here and you don't know Jesus and you want to become a part of his family, come on. He will pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah. Jesus. for anyone here who's saved but you're not in a church and the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you to become a part of this fellowship listen we're not a perfect church but we are a church walking with the Lord Jesus Christ I would be honored to serve as your pastor and you have brothers and sisters here who would who would love to wrap their arms around you and walk with you on this journey so if you're here, you want to become part of this church. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, to the earth. Come on. Come on. Jesus. To the Thank you, sir. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. The 
this final call. Come on. Are you here? You want to become part of the church? To the uh, uh, Come on. Come on. To the Jesus. Jesus. He will. He will. He will pick you up. that Sister Lucille Bryant would come. Going to ask that Sister Lucille Bryant, Sister Lucille, come on. And I'm asking for those, she's going into the, those who are going to, she's going into surgery this week. You don't need to know what it's all about, but I'm asking that all of those would come and surround her. Deacons and deacon ministry, come on. And Turn you around, and hallelujah, Jesus, say, oh, to the utmost, to the utmost, oh, 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 oh. to the utmost, hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Have a turn around. Have a turn around. We believe God that God can do what the doctors can't do. God is a healer. Yes. Is there a witness in here? Yeah. Amen. God is a healer. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And oh, my Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, yes. we come to you bringing this your servant. Yes. One who's been running for you a long time. Hallelujah. Serving you a long time. Yes. Yes. Has served in this church a long time. Yes, Lord. Lord, a woman, a quiet woman. Yes, Lord but one who continues to give of herself. Yes, yes, Lord. Now my father, she's in need yes. of your intervention. Yes, Lord. She needs you right now yes, Lord. to go with her to the doctor's room. Yes. Go into the surgeon's yes, room. Lord. Do give the doctor's wisdom. Yes. Be with the anesthesiologist. Yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen, Lord. And I pray, Father, that her recovery yes. would be ever toward you. Yes, Lord. We rebuke the enemy on every yes. side. Yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen, Lord. We believe in faith yes. for a good report. Yes, we believe for healing. Yes, we believe that you're going to bring her through. Yes, Lord. And you're going to bring her out. Yes, because what you've done with other people. Yes, Lord. You can do it. You can do it. Yes. 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 And oh God, we thank you. Because it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And then I pray for those who are going through. Yes. You know every need yes. and you know every desire. Yes. Continue to heal where there's needed. Yes. Continue to provide blessings where there's needed. Yes. Surround with love, yes. protection. Yes. And oh God, we thank you. Thank you, thank you for this church. Thank you. thank you for 99 years yes. to be in your service. Yes. We come this far by faith. Yes. Leaning on the Lord. Yes. Trusting in your holy word. Yes. You have never felt us yet. And we thank you. Thank you. We give you glory. Yeah. We give you honor. Yeah. We give you praise. Yeah. You're worthy. Yeah. You're worthy. Yeah. Worthy. You're worthy. Yeah. Worthy. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. He will be you up. And turn. God bless you. God bless you. Go home. Huh? Go home. Go home. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus.
105. And I got you. Told you we were going to be between 1 and 115, so I'm still on time. God bless you. Now, y'all know Pastor's favorite song, don't you? That it's not a gospel song now. Y'all know my favorite song, don't y'all? Y'all know Pastor's favorite song, don't y'all? Somebody said, yeah, if only you knew. Uh, uh, next week, we're going to preach about that. Uh, one of Patty LaBelle's famous singles. So Malachi chapter 1 will be that text. So invite somebody to church next week and tell them, if only you knew. Stand. destinations. Thank you for this period of worship and thank you for your divine presence. Now you're sending us and telling us to go home. Go home and tell our story of your saving power. And now may the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest Rule in the Bible with you now. His fourth is never more. Okay, that's fine.